Okay, we are outside the Holiday Inn in Concord, New Hampshire, where Go Gun Owners of New Hampshire just had a meeting where Scott Brown was the keynote speaker. And um, this gentleman was kind enough to come out and be willing to tell us what happened on the inside. So I want to say, after, after the buses go past, I want to say thank you very much for spending a few minutes with Granite Rock. Oh, I, I enjoy Granite Rock a lot. I'm Dennis Hamill from the People's Republic of Henniker. And, um, when I, I got a chance to ask Mr. Brown a question, lots of people had lots of different questions for him, primarily Second Amendment oriented questions. And he began the session by, um, my phrase for it is artfully uh, positioning himself, talking about reciprocity for uh, uh, concealed carry licenses. He talked about that as a state's rights issue and that quote, the people of Massachusetts wanted him to vote that way. He was also adamant several times about us taking him on the entirety of his record. When I was able to ask a question, I, I told him, look, this isn't about the entirety of your record. You're not, you're not running in Massachusetts, and you're not running against Gene Shaheen, which he spent a lot of time, um, you know, appropriately pillaring Gene Shaheen, but also positioning her as the only opponent. He's running for the GOP nomination. We've got three solid conservatives, and we've got this guy. And, you know, I asked him how could we trust him. I, I pointed out that on the reciprocity issue, he did not shy away from it in his letter to Thomas Menino. You know, in fact, I have that letter to Thomas Menino you know, here, where he said he supported the, now he didn't use these words, but he supported the Massachusetts method for concealed carry permits. I told him that I had an, two assumptions for him. One that he had never applied for or received a concealed carry permit in Massachusetts. He told me I was wrong. He had one. And I said, well, the second one was it. And he said, and I also have one in process here in New Hampshire. I said, well, then that was my second assumption. He said, you're 0 for 2. I said, that's true, but I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. I was assuming that you didn't know the process and you didn't know that Massachusetts was denied first. And you talk about, he talked several times about a, a set of national standards. Because of his um, uh, Washingtonian point of view, for lack of a better expression, he talked about having national standards for concealed carry licenses. And I asked him to tell me what the national standard was for driver's licenses. Because we, up here in New Hampshire, as he's been caught saying several times, uh, have massive evidence on our roads every day that the driver's license process for the Commonwealth is hopelessly flawed. So if we know that that process is no good, why would we want to rely on them for a concealed carry license process? The simple fact is that he is willing to position himself. He, for instance, said he has no requirements, no uh, standards, no belief that there should be a law regarding the size of ammunition magazines. Um, I didn't believe him, but he's not going to write that law. And he said that quite a few times. That he's not going to write a law for anti-gun positions. The fact that he signed on to and supported laws for anti-gun positions does not e e elude him, but he, he does do his best to mask it. And he, and he became almost angry with me when I said, look, you tried to defuse this. And he said, I answered appropriately and, and straightforward looking you in the eye. And I said, well, you're trying to put the best spin on it. Let's not argue about that. Eh, there's no point in arguing about that. So anyway, bottom line is, there was no satisfaction. I went to, to some trouble. I, I rejoined GONH uh, with a long time absence for no particularly good reason in order to attend that meeting um, so that I could ask him the question. And, um, you know, I'm not convinced. I, I'm, I'm absolutely not convinced. And I, I know um, Karen, I'm trying to think. I don't know Rubens, and I haven't met Bob Smith in a long time. But I know that all three of them are a better candidate than, than Scott Brown is. Scott Brown is actually, people in the meeting, people said, well, he was down in Massachusetts. And I would say to Scott Brown, you're as good a Republican as they can get in Massachusetts. But here, you're a moderate Democrat. And, and not much else. So why should Republicans vote for him? And, and our biggest problem, of course, is we've got three conservatives and one rock star. What? What's the word? I'm not even looking for rock star. Somebody who, who uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, former it centerfold. It would be a political rock star. So I mean, he, he stands a very good chance of getting the nomination, and um, I know a lot of people really rail against the lesser of two evils stuff. 
but I will pull the lever for him or put mark in the circle for him if, if his name's on that ballot, but I just hope it's not on there in, in uh, November. Well, thank you very much for your report. I appreciate the honesty and the candor, and thank you for spending a few minutes with Granite. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Crook TV.